All right. What I'm going to do here is I'm not going to talk about the uh, 401k. And I'm going to try to explain in the best possible language that I could how the 401k is ultimately a scam. <clears throat> okay, so you get a job and the idea of pensions, pensions are gone. It's all about 401k now. Soon as you get the job, that employer is trying to sell you on enrolling into their 401k plan because it's so positive, it's so perfect because they're going to match you on your contributions. Like maybe it might be up to 3%, maybe it's up to 5%, whatever, but they're going to match you. All right, so here's how it works. So you get your paycheck and through like maybe direct deposit or whatever they take some of your money and they add it into your 401k now over time this amount accumulates and they're adding money too but how much do you get when you retire and that's usually between 10 and 5 percent so let's say over the course of your career you have invested four hundred thousand dollars over the course of your career and this is a long career ten percent is going to be forty thousand dollars and fifteen percent is going to be sixty thousand dollars it sounds good that someone else is going to give you that amount of money to invest in a 401k as you're working because you're making your paychecks every week and everything and you're paying your bills so you're looking at it like I'm making this forty and sixty thousand dollars so just go with the average of fifty thousand dollars let's say you work there for ten years you're making about five thousand dollars that's what it amounts to all right, now, while maybe not something that you would laugh at, when it comes time for you to cash out, they go back over your resume, your application, your interview process, and they try to find um, a flaw. Anything that you said that might be remotely untrue, remotely, I'm talking about maybe your birthday or... Um, where you may have lived and what year you lived there. You might have lived at a certain address for three weeks longer than you thought. But you thought wrong. And you told them wrong. So, it's a flaw. At that point, they snatch their investment into you. But beside that, um, when you cash out on a, on a uh, on a 401k, they're going to tax you at the current rate. Now, what is the current rate? When you retire, I don't know what the current rate will be. But for right now, you can use that money and you can make exponential money very easily. Uh, so you retire and you owe taxes. Whatever you might owe taxes on right now could be one thing. But just look at a, the price of a candy bar. When I was growing up, when I was born in 83, the candy bars were 50 cent. And now these same candy bars are 79 cent and sometimes a dollar. You're paying taxes on a higher amount, which means it's a larger chunk of money that you're going to lose. Uh, so, understand that when people cash out of a, a, a 401k, they're going to lose money based on the current tax rate. It's not the present one, but it's the one in the future. You don't want to lose that money. Right? You're paying the company that's promising to pay you. And this is why you will not find a 
certified financial planner or a licensed accountant who's going to tell you that they have a 401k they will not in they're not going to invest in that they're not going to lose that money they're going to leave it on you now they may in, invest into the company that is holding your 401k so that they can make money and the more money that you invest the more money that they can make as a dividend you have to understand this now i want our people to understand this because i feel like black people are effectively priced out of financial education so what i'll do is i will try to help people i'll try to help our people free of charge i will try to do that now like life is life so i can't always say oh everything is 100 percent free but i will try to i will i will like repairing credit and everything that is so easy that i don't have to charge i don't have to charge a penny but you have to understand what your credit is for you can't just be like oh i want my credit score better for why why do you want a better credit score is there something that you want to obtain is it business motivated all right now how do i put this okay so if if you put your foot and put yourself in the foot of the lender and you're lending someone else money you don't want to just give them your money for free do you like think about that you do not want to give them your money for free you want some type of pay in, re in, 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 in response to what you're doing so um when you when you give someone some someone money what they're going to do is they're going to make their payments and they're going to pay you x amount and they're going to say thank you in the essence hold on i'm sorry okay so they're going to give you money in response for what you're doing for them but in the end it costs that person now if you're that person and you're focused on credit credit is you essentially saying well i cannot afford this i cannot afford that so i want to spend your money and purchase it but the deal is they're saying well i'm going to give you the money to pay for it but i want this amount back credit has nothing to do with what you are financially capable of it's all about someone else making some money because they're making you a loan without you realizing that it's a loan because it's camouflaged under the description of credit all right now you invest into a 401k and you work 30 years 30 years for this company so you're definitely in good standing now do not get me wrong when it's time for you to cash out you will be on a positive side because you work 30 years not five not two not three not a couple years here and a couple years at this company you work 30 years for one company so they're going to cash out and they're going to find a problem in your application process and in your, your interview. They're going to find something. And the tax rate, they're going to tax you at 40%. So if you have put in $100,000 and they have put in a 5% match, that's five thousand dollars but when they tax you at 40 percent that's you losing come on now hundred and five thousand dollars when they take that 40 percent out you've lost about thirty seven thousand five hundred dollars and i'm not really doing the math but that's about what it's going to be um, it's a sucker scam um, there's a reason why there's a reason why everything switched from pensions to 401k and every company jumped on board 
and every company is like, well, we offer a 401k. And people are thinking like, oh, I'm going to make some money off this. But you're not going to make no money off of it. Not when you retire. See, you retire and you need your money instantaneously. So when you lose that amount of money, it essentially puts you in debt. And I'm going to explain why. It puts you in debt. Because if you were to save that money for yourself, you would be subject only to the tax rate, but not their penalty rate. And I don't care who you work for. If you ask the accounting department about the penalty associated with withdrawing from a 401k, they're going to tell you what that rate percentage is. And it's a, a rape. They're going to kill you. They're going to take their money. And it's your money that you thought that you had. All right. Now, at the same time, that same amount of money that you was investing into them, you could invest into yourself. This is why financial accountants, certified financial planners that understand what's going on, they don't have 401ks of their own. They don't. But they might have a 401k and they tell you to enroll into it because they invest into the 401k. So they get a kickback. They get a dividend. All right. Now, I'm going to give you the raw. I don't have an ulterior motive. I want you to do better. You. Yes. You watching. I want you to do better. And I don't have any connect to your bank account. I don't want your money. I just want you to win right? because I feel like they're holding you down. They're holding you back from a financial freedom and a financial success that you can ultimately realize. Now, when you look at, when you look at the fact that you get a job and they tell you, well, 97% of our Workers, they invest into the 401k. They're happy because that's a lot of their, I guess I would client, call it calling clientele because they are clientele because they're making money for this company at retirement. But right now, not in the present, they're not making money for the company right now. But when they go to retire and when they go to get that money out, they're going to take a loss. Now, there is the traditional IRA and there's the Roth IRA. Now, the traditional IRA, you're putting your money into a, a savings account that has a, a decent and I don't want to say fair because the banks are never fair. But it's a, a decent interest rate that the bank is going to pay you back for putting your money into this traditional IRA. They're taxing you when you pull your money out. There's no tax with the money going in. Now, what is the tax rate? That's the question. Think about it. Now, whatever you're paying in taxes now, federal, federal and state, whatever you're paying now may not, it may not seem like much, but Historically, the tax rates have always increased. If they always went up, you would pay more. All right? But when you withdraw that money, there's no tax. Now, the Roth IRA does not tax you putting the money into this um, retirement account. But when you go to withdraw your money, they do not tax you at all. The tax is going in, but not coming out. But the tax rates increase. So when you go to withdraw your money, they're going to get your money as it is stated in your account statement. All right. So let me attempt to put this in perspective. You're making $100,000 a year. And you're investing into a traditional Roth account 
and you're being taxed at 10 percent nine hundred thousand dollars that you have invested is gaining interest for you but when you pull it out that nine hundred thousand dollars in increments over 10 years in increments of a hundred thousand dollars a pop that interest rate is accumulating it's going higher so you're paying seven percent this year and eight percent this year and nine percent this year and ten percent that year and it's escalating so when you pull your money out that million dollars that you think that you're going to have it dwindles down to about six hundred and forty thousand dollars but if it's a Roth IRA you pay all your money and taxes in one payment at the withdrawal point man. at the withdrawal point let's say you've been investigating in the same sample a hundred thousand a year over ten years so it's a million dollars so you withdraw and they take their little twenty they take twenty five percent so they take that and you got seven hundred and fifty thousand so in the end there's a big difference now 640,000 versus 750,000. I don't know about you. But if you give me $110,000, I'm going to consider myself up. I'm going to consider myself blessed. I need that. And when you talk to a lot of certified financial planners, they can tell you, well, cut back on this. Don't. Don't go to um what's that coffee shop um don't buy lattes every day don't do this don't do this don't go to subway don't go to burger king they're going to tell you that to save you money but in the end how much money are they really selling saving saving you they're really not saving you much all right, now on a day-to-day -day basis, if you go out to eat a lot, it's going to cost you a lot. Without people doing the math and calculating it and understanding what they're really spending. All right, so if I spend $5 a day on average, not on a daily, but on average, if I'm spending about $5 a day on average on eating out in a, in a month, in a month, we're talking about $150. Now, what's your phone bill? What's your gas bill? What's your water bill? What's your light bill? Anything with your rent or your mortgage or your car note. You're paying a lot. So, that's what they do. They tell you to cut back on your, your daily spending and to account there are not accounts that accumulate to be X amount. But when you ask a certified financial planner how to make your money make more money for you, which is what ballers do, which the, the millionaires and the billionaires do, a lot of times they have no answers. Now, see, the difference between me and a lot of them is I learned from the streets. But I got my license and I got I'm an accountant. I learn from both angles. You yourself, you can learn from everything in life. You don't have to learn from a class that you signed up to. You do not have to learn from high school. You don't have to learn from college. You can go down to, say, University of Pittsburgh and study with the people who are studying accounting. And you can take a Xerox card at the Carnegie Library and you can copy all of their textbooks and learn everything that they know. And then you can pay $50 and take the CLEP test, which is the final exam, and get your license and be an accountant for $50. How much money does it take to be an accountant? Well, what type of accountant are you trying to be? Two years, four years, eight years. Now they're 16, but that's very, very extreme and that's very rare. Um, 
it kind of does not happen. There's Susie Orman, there's the Money Honey, there's Rich Dad Poor Dad, but like that's rare. You can pay for this for nothing. Fifty dollars. And then everyone that you, in your family, you can help them the same way that I attempt to help everyone that's in my family. Now, I feel like the people in my family really don't care about money. They don't want to be financial experts or come out of debt or acquire wealth and get properties and businesses. But that's on them. I mean, I have one singular issue, and that's me having a record and me getting a job with an accounting background. But nothing's going to stop me. Like, I could be damn near next to the homeless and no one would know because I'm going to manage my accounts in such a way that I will appear to be on top. Like, I went to jail for a year and I still got the same phone number. It was paid off in advance. And when you pay off in advance, that's an extra bonus. Any bill that you have, when you pay off in advance, if you can reach the nine-month mark where you're paying off in advance, you can tell them, I would like to renew my membership subscription or whatever. They're going to title it for a year. But I've stayed current, and not only am I current, I'm ahead of time. You can tell them that and say, well, give me a 15 to 20% discount. They're going to do it. All right. So when you do that with all your bills, it's going to save you a lot. But it, it's, not a, it's not an easy task. It's not. I'm not going to lie. All right. My thing is that we are priced out of being financially literate and financially culpable in a lot of situations. Now, your culpability is you being able to understand and handle something. Literacy is your ability to understand what is going on. But if you're financially culpable, any anyone who bills you, <clears throat> whether it's your phone, gas, water, heat, they are going to look at you and they're going to say, well, this person is on the ball. We'll do whatever we can to maintain his or her um, patronization. They want to keep you there. All right. So, this whole thing about a 401k, you do not want to enroll. And I'm here. So, if you see my video, hit me up. You do not want to do that. What you want to do is you want to invest into a Roth IRA and any properties that you may have, houses, cars, businesses, what you want to do is you want to own those properties on paper, but not in name. See, the problem with black people is we want to say, we want to brag and say on Facebook, oh, I got my own houses in my name. I got this car in my name. Da, 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 da. Rich people? Do you know anything about rich people? They do not want their properties in their names they want it to be held by a piece of paper a document just going to state that that document holds and owns that property but they control that document now see if you were to sue me bro i'm not no baller all right this house that i'm here in right now this is $35,000. It's nothing. It's nothing. Now, if you deal with some broke, lame, whatever, like, he might think it means something, but it means nothing because it's only 35. All right, so if they tried to take this property from me, 
they can't because I don't own it. I own it, but I don't own it. It's owned by a piece of paper, and I control that piece of paper. Now, think about law. Try to sue a piece of paper. It does not talk. They can't take it. I speak for the paper. And the paper can't speak for itself afterwards. There's nothing they can do. Whether it's Michael Jordan or Oprah Winfrey or... Um, what's my man's name? Jello Jigglers. Um, Bill Cosby. He does not own his property. So they can't take it from him because he doesn't own it. He owns a piece of paper that they cannot touch. And the paper can't talk for itself. So that Fifth Amendment right is automatically invoked and that property is safe. You have to protect yourself and protect your assets. And when you have your assets, you use your assets to gain more money for you. Now, an asset... Is something that puts money into your pockets rather than taking money out of your pockets. So you may own your house and you might think, oh, I got this asset, I got that one, I own a car. But you're paying a car note, a mortgage, and even if you're not, you're paying taxes and insurance on both. Show me, tell me, at which point these properties put money in your pocket without you jittying or renting. They don't. They take money out of your pocket. That's a liability. You don't want to have liabilities. You want to have assets. You know, um, <clears throat> the property that I'm at right now, if I was to mortgage it and pay the mortgage I'm looking at a payment every month of about a hundred a month taxes 80 insurance 30 210 dollars now let's say I rent it out if I rent this out three bedrooms if I'm renting out what's up bro I'm, re I'm, I'm uh, recording a um, Facebook a Facebook video and shit about no doubt. So, if you're renting this out, you can charge about eight hundred and ten dollars, or say let's say eight hundred. And what I'm paying to control the property, being, you know, my taxes, insurance, and my mortgage, all together about two ten. I'm making six ninety every single month. So it's, it's kind of easy. But they take advantage of you. The same way that they would if they could take advantage of me. And I just want us to understand exactly what is going on. Now I apologize for the the camera being shaky and everything. It's in my, it's in my hand. It's my phone. Now. The goal is to get the house and rent it out. Not sell it for a flip profit because you might buy a house let's say you buy a foreclosure and those videos all over Facebook and YouTube and the internet showing how foreclosures are worth money and they are but I'm going to give you the understanding of exactly why they are, how they are, and what the trick is to this dynamic. Okay, so they get you to buy this house. And you say, well, I paid 20000 down on this house. And I have it. I have the rights. I have the, I have the, the fucking deed to it. It's my house. 
And then you go inside the house and you realize that when you step in the front door, you look into the living room and there's no no floor. The furniture that was in the living room is sitting on the basement floor. So you're scared when you walk up the steps because you're like, I don't know if this shit's going to cave in. You go up the steps safely because a lot of steps going up when a lot of people don't know. They might be scared if they're investors into foreclosures. Steps going up or safe. I assure you that you don't know anyone that went up steps and fell through. I assure you that. All right, so you go up the steps and you're like, holy shit. I can step into this main bedroom and look up to the ceiling and half the time you're looking out of the roof. There's nothing there. Foreclosures. That's what happens. So to fix this, you don't put 20000 down to buy the house. You need about another fifteen thousand dollars to renovate. Now let's say you want to flip the property using uh, my area. Fifteen thousand spent on a property, and then I'm going to sell it. So someone has to pay the. The, um, the, the, the salesman who's selling the house, the seller's agent, which is one and a half percent, the buyer's agent, five, one and a half percent, and the, the closing cost is another three thousand. So, three, thirty thousand, uh, what, what did I say? Twenty thousand. So, twenty thousand and three percent, three times two, six. So, they're going to pay six hundred on top of the um the closing which is 32 so 3500 dollars so they're paying 23.5 for this house and it's caving in when they go to sell it the house is still at the same value however if they put money in it to fix it they might put ten thousand dollars in it to fix it so now we're talking 33.5 when you sell a house, almost always, and this is a rule of thumb, you're going to lose about 15%. So when you sell the house, your net profit is a net loss. And that's why I'm all for buying a house. Even if I have to fix it up, rent it out. Because if I'm paying 300 a month on the house, and I'm charging eight fifty a month to rent the house. I'm making a profit every single month in real time of five fifty. I'm not waiting for a four hundred one k to pay me off later. I'm making this money right now. So you're making this money, and it's on you.